Hey everybody, welcome to another live stream. We've got a very, very special stream for you all tonight because we are joined by one of the world's best wedding photographers. All the way from Los Angeles, we are joined by Marlies Hartman. I can't wait for this. I've been a long time admirer and fan of Marlies' work. As you're going to see in this stream, it is beautiful. And what we're going to do, as always, for Flashmasters live streams, the first four images, so these images you've seen on the screen now, will all be free for you to watch on YouTube. And Marlies will very kindly be sharing how she created these images. And then the final four images, which are these photographs, will be for the Flashmasters members. So first four images for YouTube, and the full stream will be available to watch in the Flashmasters community. So you just need to log on to the website in the member zone, and then the full stream will be there. So without further ado, let's bring on the incredible, the amazing Marlies Hartman. Thank you so much for joining us, Marlies. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate this. No, it's an absolute pleasure. As you know, I've, I've long loved your work. I was talking to Helen actually earlier, and I think you were the very, when I set up my Patreon, which is three and a half years ago now, you were the very first non-UK photographer that I reached out to, to, to see if you would like to come on as a guest. Wow. When you're probably thinking, who's this random person asking me to do this? <laughs> and, uh, and you said yes, so I'll always be grateful, A, for you coming on, and B, for your support at that time. Um, as I say, you were the first name that I... I came, I came up with thinking, oh, I'd love to get Marlies on and try and talk to her about how she created some of these images. So yeah, I've long loved your work and it's been an honor as well to have you as part of the Flashmasters community. So, so thank you for that. And so before we get into everything, how's, your, how's everything going for you, Marlies? How's your year going? Is it a busy one? A year is actually, so it's less busy in a good way. Um, I'm shooting about half as many weddings as I shot in 2021. So I've been slowly trying to um, cut back on, well, we all were working more out of COVID, but I've, yes. I've intentionally tried to shoot less. And so that's been great because it's also allowed for me to do just, um, one, have more time for my family, which is important to me, but also just uh, have balance if I want to do any personal projects or creative work or just, um, you know, a shoot for a family that's near and dear to my heart or things like that, that um, I just didn't have time for a couple of years ago or even last year. And so uh, it's been it's been really nice. And, and I believe next year I'll be shooting even less weddings than I shot this year is sort of the goal. Um, and so I'm hoping I'm hoping to get there. Even this year, I ended up shooting. I was trying to shoot 15 weddings and I ended up with 20, which was totally fine. But next year, I'm hoping to limit my weddings to 15 so that I really have time to focus on those couples. I'm shooting more comprehensive weekends, which is what I really wanted. Um, and uh, yeah, so that is the goal for next year. I'm headed to New York City next week for Bridal mm. Fashion Week, which is it will be my first time going to Bridal Fashion Week, so I'm very excited about that and have some fun things happening there. Um, and yeah, and I'm hoping in the future that there will be more uh, opportunity for me to do education content or mentoring or things like that. So that's, Love that. that's all kind of in the works as I'm um, making more space for those things. It makes total sense. I can totally relate to that as well. I'm almost on the exact same path as you, actually, because going back a couple of years, I had my busiest ever year uh, if we came out of the pandemic. And for the first time, I don't mind admitting, I've said this before, but I was so busy that I wasn't enjoying my work for the first time ever. And it, and I think when you feel like that, it's so hard to... We're in a job, aren't we, where we have to put so much of ourselves into it. And if you do feel drained and run down and you've just not got that energy and creative excitement, it's so hard to create the images that our couples deserve. And it's quite scary, I think, to, to do this job when you when you don't feel like really into it so i took the same decision as you at that point to try and scale back on my numbers not quite managed it this year but next year i'm looking for very similar numbers to you actually i'd like to do 10 15 at the very very most and also then concentrate on on other things like make doing creative shoots for for youtube just to just to really like feed the creative side so i totally understand where you're coming from is that how you felt when you were when you were really busy as well? Like you 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 were, oh. you were lacking something. That's how I felt, and I didn't like it. 
Yeah, I mean, I was, it was, the, the big wake up call for me was in 2021, I had a wedding in, um, I had a, 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 like a 14 hour Persian wedding here in LA. Wow. And then the next day, I just come off a three day Indian wedding and then I had a Persian wedding. That was a long day and you know how Indian weddings are. So it was like three really long days. And then I yes. flew to, I flew to Hawaii um, on like a Sunday. So it was like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Indian wedding, Saturday, Persian wedding, Sunday, I flew to Hawaii, Monday, Tuesday, I had like this two day adventure elopement where I was like traveling around, flew home Wednesday, Thursday, I flew to uh, oh, the no. East Coast. For a while. And in the middle of this, uh, my daughter was like, mom, why do you have all these bug bites on your leg? And my leg was like itching me like crazy and kind of hurting. And I'm like, oh my gosh, do we have bed bugs? Like what's going on? And I realized I had shingles. And shingles are like something that typically just happens to people later in life. Um, it's a bit more uncommon to get shingles at my age. And they were really painful and it was really frustrating. And it was a result of all that stress. And that oh, was my really. So for me, it was like I'm literally giving myself shingles from the amount of stress that I'm enduring this year from just working so much. And, and every, coming out of COVID, so many of us were kind of at this mindset of it is the year of yes, right? So I'm yeah. not going to say no to anything. I'm going to make sure I just am shooting as much as possible, working as much as possible because things became more uncertain. And so uh, that was when I realized I have to cut back. I can't, I can't sustain this. My body's literally telling me you have to slow down. And so, so that was sort of when I started my slowdown for sure. Yeah, I, I feel for you. Uh, and isn't it funny how stress can, people see stress as being a, like a mental issue, but it, it manifests in such physical ways. I've had, I've not had shingles, thankfully, but I've had issues in the past, which have been physical and were eventually traced down to being stress. It's crazy. So you've got to look after yourself. It sounds as well like, Obviously, you're based in the US, whereas you know, the big difference between the US and the UK, obviously, is its size. So although, you know, I'm sh maybe shooting was shooting a lot of weddings, at least I could go. I wasn't doing all that much traveling. It was rare that I would need to go away for a weekend, say. With your weddings, do you tend to be quite local to your area or are you, like you just described there, traveling all, all over? It sort of has depended on the year. So last year I was about 50-50 with a destination versus local. Yeah. Um, this year, funny enough, I'm much more local, which has also been nice. Um, yes. And local to... Southern I've got to say, lo your local and my local might be very different as well. <laughs> Yes. I mean, we all love like there's one venue that's literally a mile from my house. And anytime I can shoot there, I absolutely love it because it's like I finish and I'm home five minutes later. Right. As soon as we're done. So there's there's definitely something nice about shooting in your own backyard. But there's also something deeply inspirational when you have the opportunity to travel to a new place. And, and anytime a couple's like, well, but have you shot here before? And I, I tell them usually my best work comes from the first time that I've shot at a new venue. So because true. You're going to yeah, and I actually try really hard not to look at other photos from from venues before I shoot there because I so badly don't want to just emulate what people have done there in the past. And I want to make sure yeah. that my and, and what results is then afterwards, I'll go back and look at what other people have shot. And I'm like, oh, I should have shot that or I should have shot there. Oh, but wait, I, I now have given this couple something completely new that they maybe wouldn't have gotten if I had just been trying to go to the same spots right that everybody shoots at at a venue so yeah i totally agree but it, it, yet the the strange irony i always think is that couples often feel like if you've not shot at a venue that's a massive disadvantage i actually think the complete opposite like you say you you have this like creative freedom whereas you're not bogged down with thinking oh i've worked here a lot so in the past so i know that i go over there then i'll do this then i'll do this um it's really it's really i think exciting to work somewhere completely new like an adventure but it's just a str strange thing that couples see it the opposite so but no totally understand um yeah so i'm pleased that you your your plan though sounds really good and i think you can achieve that Balance is such an important thing, I think. And I'm sure when you get there that, yeah, everything will just fall into place. So good luck, though, because I imagine that's going to involve you turning away work, which is always the tricky thing, isn't it? We can always well, say, oh, yeah, we're not going to take anything on. And then that inquiry comes in. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think what's helped is um, I've really honed in my pricing to be more exclusive, and and as I've moved Brilliant. into more of the luxury market, um, I think it's just sort of naturally like you're gonna hear more no's and yeah. uh, no's just because you're you're out of a couple's price point, uh, but at the same time. Um, it, it in really honing in your brand and honing in your pricing, you're also going to be attracting more of the couples that you want to be attracting and working with the couples that might already be more aligned with um, the couples that you want to work with or the weddings that you want to shoot. So from that perspective, uh, I'm hoping that it won't be too hard for me to, I, I hope that I don't have to turn away too many people because that, that does become the heart centered part of our business. Uh, but I'm hoping that having, having more of that sort of business, um, the, the business element tuned in will just naturally attract the the right couples so that it doesn't become that like, oh, sorry, you guys aren't the right fit because I don't really want it to feel like that, especially once I connect with people. Totally. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree. I know what you mean. But and good for you as well. I think it's re that's a really great lesson you just said there about, you know, having having the confidence to raise your prices, knowing that that will increase the number of i don't say rejection but other people that will, will not be able to take your inquiry any any way further anyway um because that's hard i always think you know to 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 you get used to certain responses you put your price up and then you get like nothing and you get ghosted that that takes that takes a lot of confidence i think <laughs> then, to stick with it so that's great advice that you've obviously you know that's a path that you've gone down yeah. And I mean, with that, with the the way pricing is such a tricky topic, right? Mm. Like we could do a whole all just on pricing, but, um, and I know this isn't necessarily like where the business is, but I always say like, without your business, we can't make our art. So it's really important to me to always make sure that we're addressing the business side of things. But, um, with, you have to be confident in the pricing that you present to people by knowing the value that you're able to offer. And for me, I mean, the, the thing that I feel that I can offer very strongly is my ability to use Flash and bring those tools, especially in certain venues that might need it. Um, and it's just something that I might have that somebody else might not be able to offer. And I know that there are certain planners that specifically at certain venues will recommend me above other photographers because they know that I have that ability to work in darker spaces or work if you know we need to troubleshoot a situation. I know that I have that extra, um, I have those extra tools that somebody else might not have so it's it's just about bringing that value and once you know your value you're able to present your pricing um and stand behind it with a confidence because you know what you have to offer to your couples or to to the planners that's brilliant yeah amen to that that's that's really good advice and and that's the great thing about flash as well isn't it and having an understanding off camera lighting it does give you that edge over the photographers and i think we should always be very proud of that because it does mean that if you face with difficult conditions on a on a day on a wedding day you can produce where maybe others struggle so yeah that's that's brilliant um, so with that being said, Marlies, we'll get into the images. Oh, just before we do, because we often get asked this question afterwards and, and we never know the answer. Always the, the boring stock question, but what equipment do you take on a wedding day? What, what cameras are you using and, and what sort of in, in the bag? Just a quick overview before we get into yeah, the images. Yeah, yeah. So I shoot with two Canon R5s, um, but I usually typically just use one camera body. Um, my workhorse right now is the famous uh, Canon RF 2870 F2. Oh, that's the beast. Um, the huge the beast. one. That's like going to the I gym, know. isn't it? Yeah, we all say we're like, oh, I'm only shooting one body now. But it's like uh, one <laughs> Boom. body that that is like the same as carrying around two bodies all day. So um, <laughs> I'll shift between that. I also really love the Sigma 24 to 35 F2. It's a Sigma art lens. Um, oh, I've so never even heard of that. 20, what was that I one again? Sorry. It's this like hidden gem of a lens that a lot of people don't know about. Um, but I love it if I think I'm going to need uh, something a little bit wider. So the 24 is usually about as wide as I will go for, for most of the day, unless if I'm shooting dance floor or ballroom details, things like that. Um, yeah. Or if I'm doing that's like really sleek and sexy sometimes that 16 to 35 can just show some of that like punchy drama um and, but yeah so i do have a 16 to 35 which i will bring for dance floor that's just the f4 um and i love shooting dance floor at f4 or um or higher yeah just because i like to 
have more of a wiggle room in case if I miss focus. But I'll also shoot on that 24 to 35. Sometimes I'll just shoot some fun ambient shots. And I think it's become a little bit trendier. So the fact that I have a 24 prime, which is a Sigma Art 24 prime, which is 1.4, which if I really want to shoot wide open on like dance floor photos to get that ambient light, I'll use that lens. Um, I have the RF 50 1.2 that I love. Nice. Uh, I have an five i have a macro 100 i have the 70 to 200 i have a sigma art 135 which is an f 1.8 which i love uh but lately um i would say my biggest the it's the 2870 that i have on my lens for most of the wedding day um and then i'll shoot portraits mostly on the 50 uh just depending where we are how much time we have all that um but i know if i had to i could shoot portraits on that 2870 uh for engagement shoots i don't use the 2870 at all um i usually will be on a i have a sigma art 35 the 50 or the 85 or the one i usually use just primes at an engagement shoot so Cool. Oh, and Thank then for, you. For, yeah, for flash gear, um, I use all mag mod modifiers and I use pro photo flashes. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, I have the, I have a B10 that I'll use once in a while um, that I borrow from a friend with the, the Ellen Chrome, uh, which is this huge, you know, it kind of creates that almost like window, natural soft window oh, light. Oh, nice. That's so pretty, but in general, I'm using the Magbox if I want um, a softer light, or I'm using the Mag Sphere with a grid sometimes if I want it more concentrated. But yeah, yeah. so Pro Photo is my. I, I switched over a few years ago, right before the pandemic, I believe. Was that was for, just... from Godox, or were you using Canon? No, lights? I'm like one of the few people that never <laughs> used Godox. Like oh. I am. So every, it's so funny because I did a mag mod challenge and they had all Godox flash stuff and I was like, you didn't know what to do. Having, <laughs> and I, was like, I don't know how to use this, but, um, no. So I was using Canon, Canon flashes and then I switched from Canon over to pro photo and it has been night and day difference for me in my ability to have my flashes work when I want them, how I want them. The only thing that I struggle with, with pro photo is that the triggers, um, won't show you what the flashes are set to and that gets frustrating yeah i've heard that i can and i can imagine um i suppose you can you can eyeball it i guess but uh, it must be quite strange to not know you just have to know what they are when you turn them on and then you just know am i going higher or lower and you kind of salt and pepper your light like that but it is the one thing that i didn't love about um the pro photo flashes i think they might have um and i'm not a huge gearhead so i think i know they have a new trigger that works with some of the flashes to show you specifically which each of them are at um where their settings are and i bought the new trigger not knowing that my flashes weren't compatible with that so i have the fancy new trigger but it still won't show me what my specific settings are and it is it yeah. is a little bit of a learning curve going from flash settings being at like you know, 164 or, you know, one over two. And to now one it's to 10. Kind of of, yeah, the one to 10. But once you kind of just dial in like, oh, I shoot dance floor, I start at a five, you know, and if five isn't bright enough, then we go up to a six or, you know, things like that. So you, could, you, you adjust pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's cool. Um, we also, as, not sure if you're aware, Marlies, but we recently announced that we're sponsored now by Canon. Can UK and thanks to Chuck in the comments who um, who helped with that. So yeah, we we now applaud anyone who shoots Canon. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, no, I've that... been Canon since the beginning, and it's just been the the camera system that I stick with. But I mean, gear questions are always so funny because it's I always say it's like asking a chef what oven do you cook with, right? Like, I... It's a tool, but I mean the the magic is happening because of the chef, not the not yes. The Again, I applaud that. It's just we people photographers always have this like, oh, what do you use? But ultimately, any camera I always think that's been made in the past five, ten years is going to be decent. You know, unless you know, no, no, excluding toy cameras, like anything reputable is going to be really good. Um, so it doesn't really matter, does it? But just that we no. just we just get asked all the time, what does that person use? What does that person shoot? And it's like, well, it doesn't really matter. But there we go. There you go, everyone. While Lee shoots Canon, and, and as I say, I've never used that lens, but I have seen it, the 2870, and um, yeah, having F2 all the way through, I must admit, is is pretty nice. Um, cool, thank you. Okay, so we'll get into the images then, and wow, I mean, the images you sent over are absolutely stunning. 
Uh, this first one, especially. It's like I looked at it and thought, I, I feel like I love it. And then the next feeling is just jealousy, thinking I wish this was mine. Um, I mean, oh. what... what I, how how did this come about, Marlies? I mean, it's obviously stunning. Um, I imagine was this somewhere you you saw this shot in your mind before you'd taken it? Yeah. So this was um we had done a sunrise shoot. So we had been up since Ooh. sunrise that day, and uh, we were. This was at a place called Mission Inn. Um, it's just outside of Los Angeles, and. Uh, I had brought my daughter with me. She oftentimes will work as my assistant. So she wasn't thrilled about waking up at sunrise, but we had to <laughs> do that because we had to hike. We were hiking up to this sort of castle bridge thing at this place called Mount Rubido. And then after that, um, we came back and they changed. And uh, this was actually shot more in the middle of the day. I would say like afternoon-ish. Um, so it wasn't as dark as it as it looks it looks almost like it was shot at night and i wanted to shoot it at night but we didn't have that option just because of timing and um so i knew i wanted to do something with this sort of spiral staircase it's it's something that's really iconic at this hotel it has kind right. of this like beauty east castle kind of uh vibe to it and um i i always am trying to give something that is inclusive I, environmental portraiture so environmental portraiture is something that i always try and cl include in each wedding day um each engagement shoot because oftentimes the location is one of the biggest decisions that couples are making and so very good um, point yeah yeah, so I really love incorporating the environment anytime I can. And, and I feel like if at least for the, the things that I want to blow up and put in my house are usually um, I don't necessarily want to have a 24 by 36 of my giant face. But if it was like <laughs> me in a certain place in a landscape, something like that, like I have a giant picture over our fireplace right here of my daughter, um, you know, looking out over into this valley and she's standing on this rock and it's a really wide shot. And so the beauty of it is showing the location and it's showing um you know this this gorgeous sunset and this beautiful light and then she's in the shot right so uh i'm always trying to create something that i think they can blow up and put on their wall as wall art and um and it doesn't feel as um self-absorbed as a shot of just like a giant face might feel so um i mean i think we took shots of them higher up on the on the staircase and and i think i was like trying to i was trying to just make something work and finally i had them go all the way to the bottom and i wanted it to almost feel kind of like a drone shot but we didn't have a drone and i had my daughter uh take my flash and hide under that doorway and we just kept cranking up the flash cranking up the flash just so that i could kill as much ambient light as possible um yes. and and then just had them you know i had them try doing some spins and things like that but i think just just simply sort of having them hold hands walking towards the light i think had the most the most impact so that was yeah. that was the final delivered photo yeah, it's um, it's it's truly stunning. I mean, it, there's there's nothing not to like here. I mean, the composition is so so strong uh, that my eye goes straight to the couple because of the flash and the way that, that you know that they are in that real bright spot. So my eye goes straight to them, and I also love how you have created that moment as well between them. It, it's like you've injected a uh, some movement as well, which just gives that the image just that extra that that. That extra little cherry on the top, I think, and the separation because of the angle that you've used works so so well. I think if they were just together, it wouldn't have that same impact. But the fact that we can we can see them, uh, we can see that the, the, they're obviously holding hands, but there's also a nice distance between them is really strong. They must have been over the moon when when they saw this. They definitely loved it. I mean, I'm always, I'm whenever I'm doing a creative shot like this, like I always. Um, hound i always try and tell my daughter not that she wants to be a photographer but she doesn't really have a choice i just try and teach her all the things is yeah it's highlights on shadows or shadows on highlights right so if you want to create something that's going to have that drama or instantly sort of um attract the eye you're going to have to either find highlights and create shadow on those highlights or find shadow and create highlights right so it's it's shadows on highlights or highlights on shadows. So for that instance, what makes your eye go instantly to the couple is the fact that I've created this bright spot with the flash and then they are now shadows on that highlight. And so, um, I mean, and you can see there's some dappled light on the side that I've burned down a bit and, and whatnot just to help also just draw your eye into the couple themselves. And then having that separation also helps them take up more 
more space because if they, I probably tried having them just in a more like belly to belly kind of like embrace each other, which I is my like default go to uh, pose with couples. But it, it, I think the separation definitely helped as well. Yeah, I, I think so. And and you've also definitely achieved what you mentioned before about trying to create wall art because this isn't, it's obviously, it is about the couple, but it's also very, very much an environmental portrait, as you mentioned. So it sort of takes away that that thing where people might think, oh, that's a bit egotistical to put that on the wall. Like, I'd put that on the wall. I don't even know the couple. It's absolutely <laughs> beautiful. And, and I love the fact you say as well that it was actually taken not at night time because you would think that, and again, it's one of the huge advantages of off-camera flash, that we can change what the environment looks like to create something even more dramatic. That's a great advert for Flash. Really, really nice. Now, what, one thing I wanted to ask Marley is, because I, th I think I know the answer to this, but I'm always a bit intrigued. Obviously, you've mentioned you had your daughter here helping you. Do you always have someone helping you, whether it's your daughter or somebody else, or do you sometimes shoot alone? <sighs> to be completely honest, I usually have an assistant. And I, no, no that's good. I'm, 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 I'm yes. jealous and think, why do I not do this? Because it must take... So yeah, so I I decided on, I, I remember it was one of my earlier weddings, I think it was 2017, and I left a shoot, and I didn't have an assistant, and I uh, left, I think, two light stands, and one of them had, you know, a really expensive ball head on it, and there was a flash on one of them, right? And so I left there, and I ended up calling the venue and trying to get my stuff back, and they're like, oh, it went to this person and that person. I never got it back. And that was when I realized the money that I lost that day just for getting to put, because I was so exhausted, for getting to put my gear back in my car, I was like, I could have paid for an assistant for, you know, for, for five weddings. And so um, that was when I realized I, I need to invest in an assistant as a form of insurance. And what I didn't realize was having that extra hand and that extra person makes such a difference in the work that you're able to produce that in turn, you're able to charge more and then you're able to afford having your assistant with you. Yeah, and, great uh, point. Yeah, so that was that was something that I, I realized pretty early on that, um, and I, I usually work with a second shooter and an assistant, so um, I don't want to have to worry about what my second shooter is shooting on the wedding day, but the assistant, I call them my wedding doula. So, and in, and in explaining it to my couples, I let them know um, they would help fluff a dress so that I don't have to, if I've got the composition lined up, I'm not putting it down. They, I can look at my assistant and say, you know, uh, I need a uh, monopod, flash, uh, magsphere, grid, stand there. And they're like, gotcha. And I'll be like, quarter CTO, got it, right? And then if I only have three minutes oh. as we're walking out of the hotel lobby to get this cool shot that I'm envisioning, I don't, I couldn't have done that myself. Because if I had to run up the staircase and set up a light stand and have the light and the thing, I, I, it would be like, you know what, I'm not gonna be able to make it happen. And so for me, having an assistant on the wedding day just frees me up to do so many things um, that I might not be able to do otherwise creatively, but it also just frees up your mental space. Just having someone else that is packing up your gear as you're running to the first look uh, so that you're not mentally having to think, did I get all my flashes and did I get all my lenses? Are they all packed back in my bag? I'm not worried about those little details. So then I can be thinking about, ooh, what composition do I want? Or what lighting setup do I want to have for X, Y, Z, right? It just it just makes things so much easier. And oh. then also I hope that they help me, they make sure I go to the bathroom. They're like, Marlise, it's been eight hours. Have you peed today, right? <laughs> like, they'll, they'll literally like shove a granola bar in my hand so that I can just hurry and, you know, eat it while we're walking from cocktail hour or over to the reception to get reception details. Um, it's, it's just all those little things like, Marlise, here's some water, drink some water. So you, you then have freed yourself artistically to be so much broader in what you can offer people because physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you're just like, okay, I have someone else on my team mothering me so then I can be more present and available to my couples and deliver the most that I can. And so every, I mean, I'll even bring my daughter to a lot of my engagement shoots just so that I have that extra person that I can yeah. have me carry gear or if I need them to hold the light stand or just even noticing things. There's so many little details like, like fixing a hair that might be like 
doing something strange, right? And I'm so busy worrying about the technical things that those just polishing up, it's like having an art director with you. Just have, or, or, or something as simple as like fixing the bride's ring if her ring is falling. So um, Walt Disney always said uh, this, this quote that I love and I tell people all the time um, that people can feel perfection and his whole thing was uh, when Walt Disney was creating the Tiki Room at Disneyland, which is this this animatronic room. There are these birds that come down and sing and there's water and it's this cute little show from from the very original vintage Disneyland. And he insisted that these anima animatronic birds could breathe and he wanted them as part of their animatronics. And the reason why he did that was because he said people can feel perfection. And I think it kind of goes hand in hand with our photographs that, that there's these little things that I call micro posing that make a huge difference in your photo. So, I mean, if their hands in that last photo had, had been down maybe instead of up, it wouldn't have looked as, or, or if their heads hadn't been looking at each other. So there's, there's little things that I think having an extra set of eyes um, is always helpful to have. And, and, uh. and to just yourself to just then take a second and zoom in on your photograph and, and from the back of your LCD screen and just look at it and be like, okay, I can't, I might not be able to fix this in post and I'd rather not fix this in post. What can I do to fix or make little adjustments I can make right now to make the photograph how I want it to look? I, I can't thank you enough for that for the past few minutes, what you said there, because I think the way you've described your approach to shooting a wedding it's so useful for us all to hear. And it's not, like you said there, it's not just a question of having... Because so, you're not talking about a second shooter here. You're talking about someone yeah. doing everything else. All those little things that take up so much mental bandwidth on a day. And how often I can relate exactly what you just said. You'll come back from a wedding day, you'll be looking through your images and you'll think oh, if only I would have done that or whatever, the tiniest little adjustment, whether it like yeah. be, maybe it be to the pose, to, to hair, to the background, whatever it will be, you think, oh, but I was so wrapped up in the technical in making sure that I've got everything in, exposed correctly, that the flash is, is hitting everything like that, that you don't sometimes see what's quite obvious only when you're looking back. Whereas, like you say, if you've got somebody else who's not quite, who's not got the pressure of getting the camera in the hand, but he's just seeing things with their own eyes and think, oh, why don't we just do this? You think, oh, thank you. That's so worthwhile. So, so worthwhile. And I totally agree as well. Like you say, that's going to improve your work so you can charge more. You're offering a better service. So the cost is covered as well. It's Well, and you, the other thing that you can do that, I mean, if because I know a lot of people are like, oh, my couples won't pay for an assistant or, oh, you know, the weekends you have off, assist for your photographer friends and then ask if yeah. they can then switch and do it for you. Because not only is assisting helpful for you as a photographer, but as a photographer, I still will assist my friends. Because yeah. if I go to you and I'm assisting, I'm going to pick up on things and I'm going to also be able to observe the lead photographer in a way that I can't if I'm second shooting, right? Because as an assistant, you're there and you're watching and you're like, oh, that's how they do that. I love that, yeah. right? So if you're, if you're like when people are like, I don't, you know, I can't, I can't have that, afford to have an assistant come, trade with someone. And, yes. and, and find that community and within that community, just switch off weekends that you have available. And not only will you benefit from having an assistant, but you will also benefit from being an assistant. So I, I totally point. agree. And it's funny as well, because <laughs> Helen and I have been so influenced by the Flashmasters community this past year or two. We will. It's rare now that I'll actually shoot a wedding myself. Now, I don't have an assistant as such, but I think except for one, maybe, every single wedding that I've shot this year, I've had a second shooter there. And I've become so used now to having someone, I know that if I don't have someone, what I'm offering my couples is going to be inferior. And I'm not, you know, these times, like you said there, but if it's just someone setting up your lights for, for various parts of the day. But certainly if like for portraits, like a lot of the work that we do now, both of us involves taking a shot with a light source in the shot then the lights were removed take another one and yep. yeah that that sort of thing and again that's been massively influenced by by seeing the work that's been produced by flash Bass's members but having nobody there and i'm thinking a couple of years ago i would have had a light stand there i would have took one shot i would have then got make ma well maybe i would have had a tripod but very rarely what i'd usually do is just not have the light source in but that means that the light quality is not going to be quite as good so uh, there was a compromise there but doing it this way 
it's really addictive and it's quick, isn't it? You 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 know that you're going to be able to get double the amount of shots almost in the same amount of time because you can think, I don't need to mess about too much. And that person knows what I want as well. So you don't need to even explain that much. A lot of it can be almost like telepathic. And it's it's beco- got to a stage now where if I've not got somebody with me, it's like... I'm going to ask someone, just get someone because I, I don't want to shoot it on my own now because I know I can't offer the same product. So yeah. I totally agree. And I think what you've done is take it one step further, which is what I would love to do in the future and actually have a dedicated assistant who is doing all the other things. Because it's a bit like, I suppose it's like playing golf, isn't it? Having a caddy. So so you're just concentrating on the on the shooting, but every the other person's just taking care of the other things, which is actually quite a lot. Like the, when you think about it, just the, checking the timeline, making sure that you've got everything, that making sure that you've not missed anything out with your group shots and things like that. It's it's huge. So oh, yeah, yeah and just, really great for advice. Family photos, uh, for family photos, having someone just check pockets, make sure that, you know, guys don't have their cell phones or their wallets bulging in their pockets, right? I'm not going to yeah. be thinking about that things or making sure mom put down her cocktail in her purse. It just, it just helps the whole day flow better. I mean, and, and what I've found is if, if I am shooting a wedding without an assistant, because it will happen sometimes, especially with destination weddings, my second shooter knows that half of their job that day will be assisting me. And, um, same thing when I'm second shooting with someone and they don't have an assistant, I make sure to really communicate with them. Like I am just as happy to be assisting you when you need it, me to be doing it and then shooting when you need me to be doing it. Because, um, and that's something that if someone's like, I just, I know, I know I can have a second shooter, but I won't be able to have a second shooter and an assistant. Um, you just communicate with your second shooter and make sure they know that like, they're going to have to wear both hats when you need them to. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant advice, Marlies. Couple of things. One, can I just out of interest? Can I just ask everyone in the comments just to either put in solo or team? Just let me just out of interest see those that are watching. And thank you so much for everyone who's tuned in. Um, just let us know whether you do whether you work on your own at weddings or whether you have an assistant or a second shooter. Just be curious. And also the the big question that Chuck's asked Marlies, um, does your daughter get paid? <laughs> oh, it's the wrong, I've said the wrong one. So yeah, go on. So, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, she does. I do pay her. So, um, the bonus of this, she's 14 now, but during COVID I started having her assist because we were all keeping our bubble so small. And, uh, and what's nice is not only do I pay her, but now she has money. And so anytime she wants something, it's like, well, would you like to use your money for that? So she's not only learning how to assist and how to have a job and how to be professional in front of clients, but then she's also learning money management. So it's, it's a win in a lot of ways. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Do you think she will? We're going off all tangents here. Do you think she will end up wanting to be a photographer? No. Not for her. I don't. No, I mean, I think she enjoys um, elements of it. Uh, she enjoys the creativity of it. She enjoys the fact that we do get to travel a lot, which, um, you know, is not a bad thing. But she also, uh, I think she will forever associate mom working with, with a camera. I get and that. And so even... Yeah, even when we go on vacation, she'll be like, but are you bringing your camera? Because to her, it's not a real vacation if I'm bringing a camera. So yes. um, I think because of that, but you never know. I mean, I think there's so many things that she's learned from it. And she'll even like, we'll be watching a movie. We're big movie watchers. And she'll she'll pause it and say, mom, look at this composition. Or look oh, at that Oh, love slip. that. Oh, that one's like yeah. you feel so proud. Oh, I know. Yeah. So, I mean, she's, she's very creative. She's into, um, theater is her, is her big love, which we share. Uh, and so, um, I know that what she's learning and what she's benefiting from by, by working with me or just being around a single mom who's running a business, um, is, is only beneficial to her, I would imagine. Oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, you're an amazing role model, obviously. Yeah. And she will be picking up so much. Um, and like you say, you never know, you never know. It'll be interesting to see what path she does take. Okay, yeah. right, okay, well, I've just seen the time. Sorry, Marley, so I'm taking up so much of your time here. I could talk to you all day about this. It, this is oh, gold, everything that you're sharing. So we'll move on to, to image two now. We've actually got some behind the scenes, so this is not the final image here. I thought before we show the final image, it'd just be interesting just to hear, maybe if I could ask you about your thought process of what you were trying to achieve before, because, for anybody that's already seen the end result of this image, it is stunning. But what 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 are you what are you thinking at this point, Marlies? This is more or less natural light, I assume, what we're seeing here. 
Yeah, so this is a raw file just out of camera, natural light. And um, this is a wedding in Guadalajara, Mexico. And this was the, the entrance to the venue. And when we drove down it, I said, well, 10 out of 10, I'm going to try and take a shot here at some point. And we had just uh, finished family photos. The ceremony ran really long. So of course we didn't have any sunset, which was really sad and disappointing. So I said, let's still try and make them something beautiful. And so I put them, you know, this is very classic center point focus seems to be my jam. Uh, it's like, boom, here's the couple, here's the photo. I just think it has really strong impact. Um, and it tends to be my go-to. Uh, so I right here was, I, I always start flash by flash photos by starting without flash. And I think it's, um, something that a lot of new photographers forget to do is if you want to use flash, start with your flash turned off. And yes that's it. so good yeah. yeah it's and it's one of the common things that we've had a, a number of photographers on these live streams now and that's a common thing that we hear and i think it's brilliant advice but people don't always get what that means See, it seems very strange in one way but i think it's great when you explain it yeah because the first thing i'll do i mean i very rarely will use high speed sync especially you know for for just portraits on a wedding day. So I'll set my shutter to, you know, one two hundredth if I, you know, think that I want to kill as much of the light using my shutter. And I, if I think there might be any sort of movement, so I will put it to one two hundredth and then I'll figure out, okay, how wide open do I want this shot? How low does my ISO need to be? So once I sort of dial that in, um, that's when I'll start to incorporate my flash. So I think this is a really, um, great photo to see like that's it's it's a nice photo it's fine the the location is pretty but it doesn't have um a lot of like i could probably edit it and make it look nice and deliver yeah. that and the couple would be fine right um so so that was sort of where we started but then i thought okay let's add in that flash and see if we can take it up a notch yeah and let's see that there so you can already start seeing now the, the potential just come in uh, and again, so that, what a great advert of having somebody to help you as well. You know, if you didn't have somebody, it'd be so much harder. Yeah, it would be harder. I mean, I, I, I have done this kind of shot without an assistant and you just have to put it on a light stand and, um, and just make sure that you don't, it's hidden behind the bride's dress in a way that you don't see it. Uh, but you can start to see, we had put a full CTO on the flash because I wanted it to be really warm. Um, and you can also see there's there was all of these, so there was a lake just to the right of um, where we were shooting, this big lake, and there were all these horrible little gnats flying around. And you can kind of see some of the gnats are yes. being lit up. Here. And I'm like, Huh. It's because it's like okay. boogie rain. <laughs> it almost looks kind of like a little bit of rain. So I'm like, let's see what happens with that as well um, when we backlight, right? Because anytime there's atmosphere, you backlight atmosphere. Like that's just like water, fog, like all of those go-to thoughts go through my head whenever we have some sort of atmosphere, light it from the back. Um, and then just hopefully there's enough wraparound and there's enough ambient light that you can also get. Um, I don't like doing full silhouettes for the most part. Uh, somebody once called it it's some sort of like mid silhouette, right? So um, where I still like some enough enough detail in the front that it's not just like a full watch. Now we probably have a full silhouette photo somewhere very <laughs> to talk about. But and I do do them. But it's just in general, I like to also have some detail in the front as well. So I like when there's enough ambient light that you know, I can I can create this, this punch of backlight, but that you still have detail in the front yes okay so thank you so much for for talking about that the, the setup here um and all being well if i can just press this button yeah there we go the end result is beyond beautiful it's it's like a fairy tale it's absolutely amazing yeah so um, as soon as we got that light directly behind them we saw those little bokeh balls from the gnats um that kind of look almost like gold dust right and you can see that micro posing that i was talking about like really comes into play here so um something that i will oftentimes do is i'll have grooms stagger their split their stance is what i tell them to do so that it looks like he has two legs so he's not just standing like a soldier right oh what then, good advice 
Yeah. I mean, these are like the little details that to me just make a big difference. And then for her having her hand behind her, but making sure that her wrist isn't intersecting with her bottom so that it just kind of becomes a lump right there. And we have that negative space between the curve of her bottom and her lower back and her arm. Right. And then having to make sure that she's got her wrist in sort of this perfect um, position so that it creates that sort of curve of her wrist that then follows down into the dress and all of those kinds of things. Um, even just like making sure there was a little bit of separation between the kiss of the hand. Like those are the things that to me make the difference between a good photo and a great photo. Um, because at this point we had the light dialed in, we had the composition and in creating sort of that moment, uh, but with those tiny details and then getting their faces to look relaxed and natural is also super important. So um, that's kind of the trifecta that I'm always trying to go for, which I'm sure you guys have heard a lot, which is, you know, light moment composition is, is the three things that you want to make your photo great. Uh, and so usually composition and light are the first two that you're trying to dial in and then getting that moment. And, and to me, what is encompassed with the moment is, um, that, that micro posing, those little things and making sure it's really important to me that none of the, the bulb of the flash is in the photo is actually coming in. So that's something that, um, I've noticed a lot. And it was something that I did more in the beginning is I would have a little bit of flash coming through and you see that sort of hard light. And to me, it's almost like a magician showing their trick. And um, by showing that hard flash in between them, unless if you're intentionally doing it, uh, it, it makes such a difference. And it's so easy to just, it's not easy, it's actually a pain in the butt, but you've got to make sure that that flash bulb is completely covered. So you're just getting the, the flare of the light. Yeah, on uh, what you've just uh, spoke about there for the past two, three minutes, Marlies, is absolute gold and worth this this stream alone. Like, it is we could if we only heard that, it would be well worth it. The 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 little nuances you described there in the posing, and the funny thing is, when I when I look at that as a viewer, I just think, wow, that photograph is is perfection. It's beautiful. And I don't always take it in, but the reason I don't take it in is because I can. It just works. Do you know? So sometimes you don't question things because it just looks so nice. But when you actually do break it down, you think actually there's a lot going on there that you've you put into that. But it doesn't feel forced in any way whatsoever. But if I was to picture that photograph without those little nuances, it yeah. it would it wouldn't be as strong. So it's so invaluable what you just said there and. Again, like the, the past two or three minutes, I, I'm going to try and like say that into my own brain because some of those tips are so useful. Like you're saying about asking the groom just to stand so we can see the separation in his legs. I've never once done that, but what a difference it makes. Um, yeah. Like the, the pose of the hands and, and like you say, the gap between her wrist, even the way that the, her wrist is flicked is, is stunning. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, well, and then what you don't see is I'm laying on the ground here. <laughs> love it. Day, love that. It, collecting all the bugs and the twigs and things like that because I knew that it was worth the shot. So. Oh, honestly, it's so worth it. Um, and just looking at some of the comments we've had here, um, Jesse, this is epic. Helen, magic. Holy crap, this is freaking awesome. Uh, damn, that pose is ridiculously good. Wow. Wow. With lots of W's. Um, <laughs> this is so good amazing chuck who else now feels totally nervous for marley's being the judge for this round <laughs> very good point <laughs> so are these are things when you are going to and, and thank you marley's for, for for judging the 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 latest round of the flash masters awards are these things that you look at where i assume they are when you're judging these little nuances in the posing gosh um i mean i guess it's one of those things that if a, if a photo is really good, like I think we've all established this, if a photo is really good, like all those things might not matter, right? So at the end of the day, like if you just have a photo that is a 10 out of 10, like those other little things might not be as important. But um, I mean, for me, it's like how much, when, when I've judged in the past, it's like how much impact does this photo have on me right away? Is it an emotional yes. impact? Is it is it impact from right? Is it impact from the moment? Is it impact from the lighting? Is it impact from the composition? Am I just drawn to this photo because it's the most epic spot ever? I mean, like, guys, this was just like a random tree driveway, right? With some pretty trees. Uh, most people would drive through this and be like, oh, that's nice, right? But you can make something even more spectacular 
out of it, right? And so it's not always to me about the most epic locations. I don't want people to feel limited. It's about making something spectacular, right? Out of um, what might otherwise just be mediocre. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely love it. Um, last question on this one. We've and I, I knew this would happen. Um, Alex has asked, what lens was this on? Uh, we've had a guess of the 85 1.2. What you said before, I'm thinking it might be the 50. Do you remember, Marlies? Yeah, I do. This was the Sigma 135. Ah, okay. So you were quite a long way back then. Yeah, so that was the nice thing about it being such a long driveway is I was able to go far enough away. And it was nice we didn't have any, like, you know, passerbys or cars because this was on, you know, a private venue. And um, so it's nice when they can hear you because then it's easier to communicate. Yes. But it would have been yeah. harder if I had to adjust the flash and, you know, move all those. So it was helpful having my assistant hiding behind there um, with, uh, and this was actually, I didn't have an assistant at this wedding. This was my second shooter. So you can see how, you know, your second shooter sometimes just has to be your, your flash holder. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's to say, that's what, what I do. And and what an advert as well for off camera flash versus natural light. Like you say, you, the natural light shot is perfectly nice. You know, nothing wrong with it. The, the couple will love it. I'm sure. But you can't but you compare can it with see the even the result. differences. You can see the differences even in the posing, right? So in that yes. test shot, there's, um, I switched her hand. So she's using her other hand. I made sure that she grabbed her dress in a way that it was, you know, flush with the bottom. I made sure that he split his stance. I made sure that there was enough, you know, negative space between them to really see all that beautiful, the, the beautiful gnats and bugs flying around, um, just to create that sort of magical dust Ooh. that was, um, that was floating, you know, between their bodies. So, uh, that to me is a great example of like a decent pose and a decent photo being taken to a better place just by spending an extra i mean this whole shot probably from the time we got there excuse me until we left it was maybe 10 minutes yeah that's that's amazing and i say really inspirational to hear how you created that um i've learned a lot just just from from what you've described about this particular photograph so so thank you so much um yeah let's move on to to the next one this is an amazing stream molly thank you so much for all this um i've included this one because not only is it a beautiful shot but i know it's a sort of photograph that people aspire to be able to take you know like the, the cool shot we'd often see it with a bride i love that she's in there um i think it really works well the light on her is beautiful but as i say i know that this is something that people will a shot that people will look at and think oh, I really want to be able to take something like this, but I, I don't know like how you, where your lights are, how you've not blown out the smoke with the lights on the bride and things like that. Um, so I thought this would be a great one to talk about if that's all right. And again, you know, an, an amazing photograph. So cool. And, and oh, great for you. wall art as well, I would say. You know, it's another one where I think, yeah, you could put this on your wall easily. Yeah, I mean this. This was um, this shot was actually a mistake. So uh, good it was, mistake. <laughs> this is when yeah. So the the goal originally, I tried. Um, so the bride is her family's Cuban, so they had a Cuban cigar bar. So first thing that was that is important to me is, am I taking this shot for myself or am I taking it for my for because I'm serving my client, right? And I knew that it was meaningful to them that um, they would have a photo with these cigars because her family. Cuban and they had this Cuban cigar bar. So uh, originally, because we were up in Malibu and there was very little light pollution um, and we were sort of up on this cliff, I knew I could get a solid black behind them very easily because there was no ambient light that I'd have to worry about behind them um, or like city lights or anything like that. And so uh, I started by just backlighting them. And then when the backlight wasn't working, uh, for me at least, that was when I added in a second light. And this, uh, no, I added in two more lights. So I was actually gonna try and light both of their faces and uh, have also the third light in the back. First, this was back when I had my Canon flashes. One of the flashes was not triggering. And so oh. it just ended up lighting her and I was like, First, I was trying to fix it, and I was like, dang it, how do we, why is this flash not triggering? And then I realized, oh, I actually really prefer it this way. And so once we had those lights dialed in, then I just, you know, had the pose. Um, Jesse and Moira had done something similar with, I think, a champagne glass or maybe a champagne glass and a cigar. And 
so I was definitely inspired by them for this shot, but this was sort of my my take on it. Oh yeah, it, it's it's amazing. So just to, just so I'm, I'm aware then. So two lights, you say. One obviously behind the couple. Is the smoke purely coming from the cigars, or have you added anything else in? Nope, that was just the cigar smoke. They were both a little woozy after because I just kept having them puff on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. And then just just one light on on the bride. And I and I actually do agree. I think that for the groom especially it's like there's an air of mystery it's like an extra level of cool i think um i think it works really well and again i'm also noting now obviously that the nuances in, in your posing here the separation between the cigar and and the, the actual faces as well um is, is really important there's no crossover um and and just the the moment you've got you know like in terms that we can tell the groom is just he's not just stood there glum you know he's, he's blown out the smoke the bride's got that little smile on her face um yeah it's really really well done and how did you create create the blue marlies of, of the smoke so i think it was just that i had a quarter or a half cto on the bride and so when I cooled it down in post, it made the smoke blue. But I'm sure I probably even made it a little bit more blue in post. That's where yeah. your, you know, your post-processing magic works. Yeah, totally. And it works. The, the, the warmth of the, of the light on the bride and the cool of the background is really nice. Um, question here. Good question. Uh, does the light in the back have any modifier on it or is it a bare... Yeah, I remember. usually will use a mag sphere, which gives it um, that spread. Uh, I probably had a grid on the bride. So the, the flash that was on the bride had a grid on it. And then the flash behind the couple had a sphere. Yeah, really, really cool. Of interest, Marlies, I'm also curious with this, the answer to this question. With a shot like this, you know, it's, it's really, you know, it's beautiful. The couple are bound to love it. Do you ever, are you ever, are you someone that will show your couple the image once you've taken it at the time? Or do you always hold it back? Um, it definitely I depends. never do, but I just think they're bound to like this. Yeah, I think I might have. I mean, if I'm worried that the couple is feeling um, impatient or if I feel like they're they're not, they usually can tell by my face and my reaction that I'm so <laughs> yeah. excited about working that then they're like, oh, okay, we'll stand still and do what she says and keep smoking the cigar. Um, it, it honestly just depends on the couple. And I think you have to just sort of read your couple, read the situation, know your couple so that um, you can have, a, you can kind of make that decision in the moment. Um, but I, I love showing my couples, but sometimes I also feel like there's something really fun about waiting and then giving them that surprise and that drama when they see the delivered photograph. Totally, yes, yeah. As I say, I, I, I don't, because um, I always think, oh, if, if even if I like it, if they don't and I, I lose them, then that'll be awful. But I, I just think with certain photographs, you think they're bound to like that. So it can really like then then give them so much like excitement on the day and, and they're going to be really up for whatever you suggest to them. If you do do it, it just always feels a bit risky, but I just thought with a shot like that, you're not going to get that wrong because they're, they're bound to like it. Um, that, yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. And the last photograph that we're going to talk through on YouTube is this one. And again, it's just one of those that you just look at and think, Oh, I give up. That's just insanely good. Um, it, it's just one of those that you look at it and it has so much immediate impact, so much like visual impact. As soon as you see it within a split second, it's absolutely amazing. Um, I love the atmosphere in this. Um, yeah, again, Molly, if you wouldn't mind talking us through this one, that would be amazing. Yeah, so this was an elopement up in Big Sur, California. Um, and you guys can see, like, I'm not doing anything that's that spectacular. I don't have multiple light setups. Like, what my, like, everything I'm doing is pretty simple, which is awesome because then it means, you know, it can easily be done by, by anyone. Uh, we were supposed to do a star shot that night. And at the end of, the um at the end of the night we had gone to you know this restaurant where they had dinner with their friends and 
the the plan was we're gonna go take this gorgeous star shot because there's zero light pollution up in Big Sur. It's a beautiful place. It's probably my favorite place in the 48 United States for sure. Um, is Big Sur, and as we're as we leave the restaurant, we realize uh, there's no way we're gonna get a star shot, guys. Like it's it's completely foggy, and we're driving back to the hotel where we're all staying. And as we're driving, I I see this little path. And um, I see sort of these trees and I was like, oh man, that, that could be really cool. And we get up to the top and I'm like, hey guys, do you wanna just take five minutes to go try something? It might not work. And they're like, okay, sure. Um, Love it. So, so we just turned the car around. We drove you know, a minute back down the road over to the spot and um, it was super, super dark. So I, I mean, the biggest challenge taking this shot was the fact that like we, I, I had to use, you know, um, iPhone flashlight just to catch the focus and, uh, had my, uh, second shooter, same thing. I didn't have an assistant at this wedding, uh, standing maybe somewhere between five and 10 feet back, maybe a little bit more. Uh, we put a mag sphere on it and I believe it was a quarter CTO. Um, I don't think we did a full CTO on this one. And as soon as we popped the first shot, I mean, we were just like, oh my gosh, this is, yeah. this is when the photography gods are just giving you a gift, right? Because honestly, if we were to shoot this in my living room, it's just, it's just a couple looking at each other uh, with one backlight, right? But we got super lucky. And that's when, um, you know, they say luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And I knew at this point in the night, they didn't have a huge attention span. They'd been having drinks. It was, they were literally going home to be, you know, spend their first night as a newlywed couple. And I had to just be fast and furious and get the shot. And I knew it was worth it for them a hundred million percent. But I mean, it's, it's literally pretty much the same concept as the, as the photo with, uh, with the uh, same thing. You just backlight atmosphere and you just have to be really good at knowing how to do these shots so that when you have an opportunity, um, it's, you just can make it happen. And, and I was not laying on the ground for this shot. As you can see, I'm definitely a little bit higher. Um, and, uh, I believe this was probably taken on a, it's either, I would say a 50. Um, that would be my guess. If I had to guess, it might be a 35, but I'm pretty sure it was a 50, but maybe a 35. Yeah, no, it, it, it's beautiful. And I, I've, I'm surprised, I must admit, I thought you would have added, you've added that smoke. So to have that naturally <laughs> is amazing. But also you say that, you know, you got lucky, but you made it happen. You saw the conditions and thought, let's do this. Because times like that, sometimes it's easy to think, oh, it's at the end of the night, I can just go home. But you didn't. You thought, no, I'm going to, I'm going to try and get this last shot because I know it will be worth it. And, I think and every it totally is. I think every photographer goes uh, through this, this, there's always like this moment, not maybe on every shoot, but most shoots where you have this like split second of an idea or a thought or an inkling. And it's that moment of, do I act on this or do I yes, not, right? Yes, so well. I know exactly do what I you mean. Do I, and, and most of the time, if you listen to that voice and you act on it, something really great happens. Um, and there's been weddings where like, I've had opportunities to do really cool things and I'm like the couple, it's just, they're not gonna, they're, they're done, right? And then you're just like, okay, oh well, guess I won't know what I won't know and we won't see what, you know, we didn't, we didn't make happen. But um, if, you can, if you can listen to that voice and act on it, usually the result is um, something really cool. And I always tell the couples, guys, if it doesn't read, if it's not working, we'll just move on. Yeah, but you might as well buy yourself that chance. Um, and, I, and I'm sure that they're going to be really excited as well. Because if you're excited and they'll be able to pick up on that, they're going to feel that and then think, do you know what? Let's just do it. Let's let's do this. And I can only imagine when you actually took this, saw it on the back of your camera, that your emotion then would have come out. You'd be like, whoa, guys, wait, look. And that's, they're just going to love that. And it's almost giving them an experience as well on the day. Oh, I mean, that kind of excitement is just totally um, contagious, right? So if you're that excited, they're going to sense that and they're going to feel it. And then they're excited and then they're like, oh, okay, what else can we do for you, right? Like, how else can we make this shot perfect? So, and the biggest thing when you have um, fog, 
uh, is those light beams that kind of come between them. Uh, it's you, you have to play around with it by just moving their faces a little bit, by moving the light a little bit, it actually makes a really big difference on where those beams go. Um, but I once had a videographer recently uh, tell me like, oh, well, you know, you, you make a lot of this stuff happen. Like, I know you do a lot in like Photoshop and like, and I was Aww. like, actually, because I just get really lucky. And it was funny because that night we had, um, we had like this cool mist at the end of the night. And so I said to the videographer, I'm like, come here, I'm going to show you like my, my Photoshop magic. And we did it. <laughs> yes. Somewhat similar to this. And I was like, there you go. I was like, I told you, I just get, I get really lucky that, um, that I have these cool opportunities come. And then it's listening to that voice and jumping on it and just making it happen for your couple. Yeah, totally. Oh, I love that as well. How you, how you said, you, you know, you've got to do your Photoshop in camera. Amazing. Oh, it's absolutely stunning. Wow, Marlise, thank you so much. You've shared so much on this stream. The comments have been incredible, which doesn't surprise me. Your images are just insane. And you say, you said a second ago, you get very lucky. I don't think it's a coincidence you get very, very lucky time and time and time again. It's, that's not luck, that's pure skill. And um, we're, we're honored to have had you join us. So, Thank you so much for everything that you shared on this stream. Again, just to remind you all, we're going to carry on talking to Marlies now in the Flash Masters community. So if you want to see how Marlies created these four images and why wouldn't you, because look at them, then please join the Flash Masters community. You can do so at flashmasters.co. This stream in its entirety will be there for you to watch, including these extra four images. But for now, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for joining. Please do like and subscribe to us. And there's lots more streams coming up like this in the future. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Marlies, for everything you shared in the stream. We are so, so grateful. And we will see you in the next one. <laughs>